Hey guys, Claire here, and in today's video, we're going to talk about all things Harry and Meghan. Fortune Magazine recently did an article on its most famous Girl Scouts, which of course included Duchess Meghan and Grace Kelly, Princess of Monaco. So if you're interested, check it out, it's a very good read. According to Publishers Weekly, Prince Harry's memoir, Spare, was a top-selling English language print book and the most borrowed library book in Canada in 2023. A few videos back, we briefly touched on Harry and Meghan's visit to the Kinsey Art Collection in SoFi Stadium, and recently we received some more updates via the Sussex.com website, where we got a few more photos and a little bit more details into the event. This event was a partnership between the Artful Foundation and the Bernard and Shirley Kinsey Foundation for Art and Education. The Kinsey Collection is one of the most extensive holdings of African American art, artifacts, and documents. Not only was Harry and Meghan in attendance, we also know that Mama Doria was there as well. We even got to see a photo between Mama Doria and Mama Tina. And for those of you who don't know, Mama Tina is the mother to Beyonce. And not only that, I spy another person making a special appearance at the collection. We love to see it. I love to see Harry and Meghan making these wonderful connections with like-minded individuals, fostering stronger relationships with people within their community. Nicely done. The Duchess of Sussex paid a special visit to the hospital as part of the Make March Matter campaign. On March 21st, the Duchess spent an afternoon with young patients and read three of her favorite children's books. The CHLA, or Children's Hospital Los Angeles, Literally Healing Program gifts families at the facility more than 65,000 books annually and provides a unique opportunity to promote literacy. In addition, the program also helps by providing additional therapeutic literary resources. The Make March Matter campaign is CHLA's annual fundraiser with a mission to create hope and health futures. The fund's raise goes towards making sure that the hospital can provide the best quality care to sick and injured children. So it warmed my heart so much to Meghan Markle, aka the Duchess of Sussex. She visited Children's Hospital Los Angeles as well and gave patients and staff a healing story time. <laughs> Children were laughing and singing as the Duchess turned into character with every page of books like Rosie the Riveter, Pete the Cat. Have you heard of that one? Mm -mm. And I Saw a Cat. CHLA's Literally Healing. It's an innovative reading program that gives families at CHLA more than 65,000 books annually and promotes literacy. Now, this is not the first time that Duchess Megan has been seen reading for the kids. But it's interesting that the UK press, well, the Daily Mail in particular, is attempting to link Meghan's hospital visit as a royal style type of visit. Even though here in the US we have anything from former presidents, former first ladies, celebrities, singers, athletes, who have all spent their time reading to children at hospitals. And it's interesting to me because the UK tabloid spends most of his time saying how irrelevant Megan is, how she's this, that, and the other. But every time she does something that gets really good press and she just seems to be in her element, they'll always try to tie it towards the royal family somehow. Interesting. Okay, good for her. She is doing what a lot of celebrities in LA do, going to a children's yeah. hospital. Mm. I, I don't see this as out of character. This kind of fits into what she does, her charity work. I do think, though, the more interesting thing is whether she's going to come with Prince Harry. Exactly. In May. Exactly. It's going to be interesting because I actually think she's avoiding the UK because she's not interested in the whole drama and yeah. kind of being injected. Is she going to talk to Kate and all of that? Um, I personally think she's going to not come because obviously Prince Harry has lost his case with the Home Office. Mm -hmm. And as he said, he doesn't feel safe bringing his family over. Mm. I don't think so. She'll come. Yeah, I, I, come. I really don't think she'll come because I think you've nailed it. She's just not interested in being tabloid. I mean, she's tabloid for her anyway, anyway yeah. whether she's here or not. Like hundreds of articles exactly. written a day about she was absolutely wearing nothing. Shoes, and we know this. Exactly. I, 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 exactly. I mean, I do too. Yeah, I need to know this. Shoe size. Mm -hmm. She is coming. Okay. She won't. <laughs> Megan is coming to town. Like she will be there. She's she not going to miss this. For love, no money. Meghan Markle, this will be the most. She stayed away okay. for lots of other sort of minor visits mm. that Harry has made. She sort of made it clear that this isn't a place she wants to come back to. And it's lovely to see a lot of American media simply focusing on the facts. Meghan showed up, she had a good time, the children had a good time. And all in all, it was a positive experience. 
Megan wore a beautiful Oscar de la Renta dress, which we have seen before, and it was the perfect spring floral outfit for story reading. Under Extra TV's Twitter, someone commented, the first thing I noticed is that this is raw footage and there's no AI discrepancies. Let me tell you, the way I cackled <laughs> when I read that tweet, Kensington Palace is never going to live down these AI Photoshop allegations. Speaking of which, I saw a couple of comments in prior videos concerning Getty's latest editorial note for the video where Kate talked about her diagnosis. It's interesting. And for those of you who don't know, this is what it is. The editor's note on Getty Images states that this handout clip talking about the video was provided by a third party organization and may not adhere to Getty Images editorial policy. Hmm. So what's that about? The statement by Getty Images certainly does not help all the conspiracies and theories of people who think that there is something far more sinister at play here. What do you guys think? Y'all, I absolutely cannot. Have y'all seen this? So it looks like now Getty Images, which is like how all images and videos kind of streamline through mainstream media, is saying, um, we need to put a caveat on Kate's video. The note states that the footage, quote, might not adhere to its editorial policy. Y'all, I have so many questions and thoughts. So now is Getty Image going to put on every video or picture from the royal families that it may not be authentic? And now, was the video not real? Princess Kate, where are you? We really need to see you like in real life, in real time. This just gets crazier and crazier. What do you think? Was it her or was it not? I just wanted to take a moment to say thank you guys. We've officially passed the 15K subscribers. This channel still feels very new to me, but I wanted to say thank you so much for all of you who have subscribed. If you're not subscribed, please do so. I'd really appreciate it. And thank you to everyone who watches and comments and likes. Every engagement is helpful in showing YouTube that there are people who are interested in a more nuanced and positive commentary concerning Harry and Meghan. So yeah, thanks so much guys. Meghan has pulled an absolute power move here. Goodness knows how it didn't leak to the press. Hmm. Let's think about that for a moment. Megan has pulled an absolute power move here by visiting a children's hospital and doing the great things that you need to do with poorly children, ill children. Speak to them, give them hope, treat them like humans, and of course do nice things like reading to them. We don't want a comparison on this channel. It's not Megan versus Kate, but look at the glamour and the presence that Megan has here. She's like a film star. Oh, because guess what? She is actually a film star. Compare that to Kate's very limited schedule throughout the year, even when she is well, and you'll see a massive difference in those two personalities and how hard they want to work to bring joy to other people. It's what's in the heart and how hard you want to work. I think I'm moving over to the Megan camp. What about you? Shoot, I've been in the Megan camp long before there was a Harry and Megan. Since the suit days. <laughs> Ever since we've learned more about King Charles's and Kate's condition, we've talked about the weird way that the British press and even royal fans on social media still continue to be hyper focused on Harry and Meghan. Now, there was a recent article in the Mira written by Tessa Fence Riding Dunlop, and the Duchess of Eden pretty much summed up how I felt while reading that article. And girl, I feel the same about Tessa. I can't stand Tessa and she really ticked me off in this article. So let's talk about it. Inside Prince Harry's true feelings over Kate Middleton's cancer announcement. Now, mind you, she never talked to Harry and Harry never said any of this. She's just making all of this up. So it wouldn't be the mirror without bringing up Spare and 
making this allegation that Harry went to town on Kate, which is an absolute lie, but he did bring up his assault that he experienced at the hands of his brother, but clearly these people don't care. They talk about Megan and her new lifestyle brand, but Tessa says, I feel compassion for Harry and Meghan. No, they don't have cancer. And yes, they have been publicly critical of the British royal family. But in our own families, how many of us hold back our feelings on the off chance a sibling or sister-in-law might get sick? I rest my case. There's no case to rest here. You have no idea what you're talking about. You have no idea what it means to be low contact or no contact with an abusive family. That's not at all how this works. But again, let's talk about things that you know nothing about. But while it's not entirely their fault, the Sussexes are now on the back foot. Harry's book Spare is a permanent proof that he and one of the world's most famous women, Kate, are no longer close. They were never close. He told everybody that they were no, they were never close. But again, let's ignore what he says in favor of what they want to believe. Beyond the uncomfortable optics, it is also possible that the Sussex brand will have taken a knock. Firstly, hard though it may be to believe, the public only has so much bandwidth for royal celebrity, and right now it is Kate who is a global icon. Now, the thing that I find really interesting about this is that everybody outside of the UK, and maybe even the Commonwealth, we're all called complete idiots when we say that the British royal family operate as celebrities, influencers really, that are backed by the government and funded by the taxpayer. We're told we have no idea what we're talking about, but when they want to create a scarcity mindset around the members of the British royal family, well, now they're royal celebrities. Interesting, isn't it? And Kate is a global icon? No. This has damaged not only her reputation, but the reputation of William and quite frankly, all of the rest of the working British royals. What are y'all talking about? Sure, Harry and Meghan had a right to complain about the press intrusion and difficult dynamics within the institution of royalty, but can anything compare to the nightmare assault on Kate over the last two months? So you mean all of the racism, xenophobia, misogynoir that Meghan Markle experienced, saying that she had exotic DNA and how she was going to ruin the British royal family? You're telling me that these people that when Harry and Meghan were dating stalked Meghan to Canada and then boxed her car in, trying to take pictures of her, putting her life in danger? That clearly was nothing compared to what Kate experienced for the last two months. Something that she experienced due to William and her own incompetence. But yes, it's worse for Kate because she goes on to say that Kate behind palace walls grappling with major surgery and a cancer diagnosis when the world was losing its mind over her whereabouts ignores the fact that not only did Megan experience racism, misogynoir, and xenophobia, that she also experienced unaliving threats simply because she's a black woman that was married to a, that is married to a prince. That she lost a baby because of the abuse that she experienced. That she was pushed to the brink of wanting to take her life and was denied, denied medical care because it was going to embarrass the British royal family. Do you think they denied Kate medical care? No, no, they didn't. But yes, two months of Kate being uncomfy trumps eight plus years of abuse that Meghan Markle has experienced to the point that she'd lost a child. But yeah, way harder for Kate. Still find this the strangest theory of these people. These people who just don't like Meghan Markle and Harry for that matter, but mostly Meghan. Apparently we're the Sussex squad and we get paid by Meghan Markle. And you know, some of us do work in theory. We actually take some time to research and actually provide proof or call out misinformation and repeated misinformation. But some of these hate pages take one article or they heard something or they just find something that suits their agenda and they share it and it gets thousands of views, thousands of likes. Are they being paid? Mm -hmm. And also the funny thing about you lot is you always come back with a second comment. You can't help it. You're so angry. And also I've noticed this one. I saw this the other day and I was like, Jam, what are you talking about? Oh, you're annoyed because, oh, because Meghan Markle might be selling jam one day and that makes you so angry. And we're both laughing at you. Stay mad. And I can't begin to tell you how many times I've had royal fans come into my comment section saying that I have been paid by Meghan or the people who leave positive comments about Harry and Meghan in my comment section have all been paid off <laughs> by Meghan. 
if you go on different social media platforms, you'll often see them saying that every single organization or foundation that Harry and Meghan have worked with, they've been paid off by Harry and Meghan. Every single award Meghan wins, somehow she's paid them all off for every panel that she does, every award that she wins. Okay, and then in the next breath, they'll say that she doesn't have any money and she's irrelevant. I'm like, you gotta pick a lane, boo. You gotta pick a lane. Because if what's rolling around in your adult mind is that Megan has enough money to buy off every single person, organization, business, institution, foundation on this planet that works with her, that has complimentary things to say about her, is bought and paid for by Megan. I mean, she must be a billionaire. Richer than Oprah. Richer than Oprah and Tyler Perry combined. The math isn't mathin'. But then again, I've realized with a lot of these people, like Amanda said in the last video, there's a certain amount of brain rot that has occurred. So logic and common sense is nowhere to be found. And let's just keep it real. The only royal couple who has been accused by the New York Times of buying followers? Well, it ain't Harry and Meghan. That was William and Kate. So, yeah. I recently did a short basically making fun of the, the most ridiculous headlines from the UK tabloids, basically trying to tell Megan that she ought to dim her light while Kate has her health crisis. And here we are days later learning that Charles is to offer the public a peek behind the scenes at Bumworld for a hundred pounds. The rooms in the royal residence where the king and queen holiday each summer will go on show to a limited number of visitors from early May to mid-August. So you're telling me Charles is ill, Camilla could go on vacation, Sophie and Edward could go skiing, the York sisters can gallivant around the globe, uh, Kate Middleton's brother can put out press concerning some new item that he was attempting to put on the market. Pippa could go on vacation, but somehow Megan is the only one who ought to slow her roll for the sake of Kate. Let's not forget, what was Kate doing PR-wise when Megan had her miscarriage? Yeah, knock it off. Also, this is Charles's personal home. This is not a part of the Crown Estate. So this is for his personal pockets. I would imagine that's where the profits would be going. We haven't heard anything so far. But what we also haven't heard so far are the townsfolk, <laughs> aka the royal fans, both the career fans like uh, Angela Levin and Robert Jobson and whatnot, and those on social media crying out in anger that Charles is using his royal connection to make money for himself, even though he has inherited his mother's massive estate. The hypocrisy and double standards. Another day, another one. It was recently revealed that Camilla's son, Tom Parker Bowles, has a new cookbook coming up later on this year called Cooking and the Crown. And it's interesting that none of the royal fans or Royal Rhoda has a problem with him using a book to make money via his royal connections. And if you look at the cover of the book, it looks very royal-esque. Yet, just a few weeks past, there were a million and one articles and panel discussions about the use of a royal-looking crest on Meghan's upcoming brand. Hmm hypocrisy once again. And this time around, you can't say, well, you know, Charles and the others are using their business endeavors and giving back to the people. No one and no one but Tom Parker Bowles will be profiting off of this book. Another case of hypocrisy. 
Meghan Markle seriously has the chicest style ever. It is just so clean, so beautiful, so classy. Everything is just so crisp. It's so crisp and chic. That's literally the two words that I would describe it as. There's also such an elegance about it that I just love. Her royal style was still kind of understated because it needed to be, but also super fashionable. She just wears a coat so well. The coat game was just so strong. And I feel like a lot of her time in the royal family was focused on the drama, but what I was focused on was what she was wearing every single time. I just always look forward to her outfits because I know they're gonna be so chic and classy. I just love a pantsuit moment on Meghan Markle. This moment was just everything. And I also love her preppy style. Her style, I feel like is a royal California chill girl. I just want to go to Wimbledon with her because I feel like it would be so much fun. My god and this look when she was pregnant was just so freaking cute. Also felt bad that she like literally had to make so many appearances when she was pregnant. I would not want to do that. Also I know as a royal you can't really take a lot of fashion risks and I feel like that's why a lot of people didn't really enjoy it but I loved it. I know a lot of people don't like Meghan Markle but I I don't know. I'm a Meghan Markle stan. Like what? She married someone she loved and didn't want to be in a toxic family? Yeah. I bet you a lot of people would want to leave those families too. Also, I feel like her second wedding dress was so much better than her first. She is just so freaking chic and I love her. Oh, sauce has this and a clo- Who are these sauces? Ketchup and HP. I don't even know who these sauces is. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Also, hit that notification bell.